all the punch riders have the answers. And here to put the questions is the star of the show, Lenny Bennett. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to Punchlines, the show that every week attracts the cream of show business. And of course, when you get cream, you do get a few cloths. <laughs> so, let's see who sees with us tonight. Uh, fine young comedian, ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Jeff Stevenson with us tonight. Say yeah, hello. How are you? Oh. Yeah. Jeffrey. Hi, Lenny. Fine young comedian, tell us a new joke. Goodness well, knows Lenny, I've heard some bad what? news today. Although, you know E.T. went home. Is that right? Yeah, he never made it. He got attacked by a Sanusi washing machine. <laughs> Very nice <laughs> joke, very nice joke indeed. A round of applause for young Jeff. A lot of young talent on the show tonight. Gary Wilmot is with us. Say hello to Gary. There oh, we go. Hello, hello. Well, actually, Lenny, I, I'm not really that young, you know. Well, I suppose compared to you, I am a bit young. <laughs> A minute. No, Don't accept. Right, right. I mean, my dad used to watch you. Yeah, so You're during dad. the war. During the war. <laughs> <laughs> you could never work out which got the best laughs, you or the Blitz. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. That's all right. That's <laughs> Gary Wilmot, I who I will not be speaking to for the rest of the show. <laughs> Good job I got friends on the show. Pa Patty Goldie. Don't here. accept any lip. Quite Don't right. Ac just hit him. Yeah. Use your pension book. <laughs> The old jokes is it tonight. All the old jokes. Excuse me, excuse me. Oh, another one. Here we go. Yes, go on. Go can on, anyone, Roger. Can anyone yes. join in? Yes. 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 I, I, I know if you viewers at home, you may think Lenny works his show from behind a desk. Actually, that's his walking frame. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. Yes, yeah, sorry about yeah, that. From you as well. I mean, he's a bit past his sell-by date. Um, right. <laughs> Time to meet our two contestants, ladies and gentlemen. Nice round of applause for Helen Brannan and for Mick Durkin. There we are. <laughs> Helen. Helen is a Scottish lady. At least she was born in Scotland. You now live where, Helen? In West Sussex, Chichester. In Chichester. And I know that you're a trained nurse and you have a little daughter, Nicola, two years ago. And this is really interesting. It says that you met your husband, who's an anaesthetist, Mark, over an operating table. Yes, Is that right? Over a vasectomy, in fact. A vasectomy? <laughs> <laughs> you see, some lovers gaze at each other across a crowded yeah. room. I, I should have to think what you were gazing across. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk to Mick. Mick Durkin, where are you from, Mick? Leeds. Leeds, Yorkshire yeah. lad. What do you do? I'm a printer. Yeah, but you used to be in the Paris, didn't you? I did, yeah. Very proud of that. Very proud of it. How many years? Four years. Parachutist. 36 jumps. 36 jumps. Excellent. Yeah. Well done. Right. <laughs> to help Mick and to help Helen play punchlines, as usual, to star guests, ladies and gentlemen, a nice warm round of applause for Freddie Paraface Davis and for the lovely Stephanie Lawrence. <laughs> lovely Stephanie, a delight to have her back on the show. How are you, my dear? Very well, thank but you. But a Yorkshire lad for you tonight. Ex parachutist. Yes, I can tell. <laughs> How can you tell? <laughs> Kisses all the way up. Really? Yes. Do they do that in Yorkshire? All really? The way up. Is oh. that right? <laughs> he, did, he didn't do it when I met him, but nevertheless. Uh, <laughs> Fred, <laughs> best hat on for the occasion. Oh, absolutely <laughs> cool. <Yeah. laughs> I thought I'd take it off for a change. She'd like to wear it, she said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she could have a try if she likes. Go on, Go on. Go on. Yes. Thank you. Excellent. <laughs> can, can, can you do the voice, Helen? I put it there. Well, Get it off quick. <laughs> I think I'd sooner have a vasectomy, right. Any time. Any time? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Uh... I bet that'll be cut. Yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to keep my walking frame between her and her. Right, uh, right, let's play the game. Punchlines, please. Are you going to carry me to bed? I'd like you to give me a specimen. We rubbed the pile off the carpet. I'm very fast for an 18-year-old. I can't leave my buttons like these. Why don't we do it in the road? Do you think I might need false ones? <laughs> I suppose you want me to shake it? <laughs> we are nice, simple punchlines for you, Mick. Shouldn't be much difficulty for an ex-paratrooper. Yes? 
No problem. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Full, of, <laughs> full of Yorkshire grit. Go get it, Mick. Here we go. Zola Budd turned to Sebastian Coe. What did she say? Zola to Sebastian Budd. Number eight. Number eight. <laughs> of that effect. Uh, Zola, bud to Sebastian Coe. You've Number got me eight. on the run now. Right, uh, <laughs> go ahead, mate. Number eight. You think that Zola, bud said to Sebastian Coe, Madeline? I suppose you want me to shake it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what runners are. Uh, <laughs> Helen. Incorrect, I have to tell you, Mick. Uh, Helen, in the surgery, Esther Ranson said to the dentist. Esther Ranson would say? Number three. You think that Esther Ranson said to the dentist, Bobby Davro? Do you think I might need false ones? Well, how about that? Well, you've got the Esther Ranson teeth. Well done, Helen. See, this is like most things to you. It's a snip. Uh, Fred, Freddie, Cinderella smiled at Prince Charming, veteran of many pantomimes yourself. What did Cinderella say to Prince Charming? Number six. You think number six? Why don't we do it in the road? <laughs> What kind of pantomime wrong. have you been in, dear me? No, wrong. <laughs> Stephanie, on their wedding night, the newlywed said to her husband... <laughs> Do we have some newlyweds in the audience? Number four. You think the newlywed said to her husband on her wedding night, Debbie Arnold? Oh, I'm very fast for an 18-year-old. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Helen. The nurse went up to the page. <laughs> one for you. Just the way they come out, the nurse went to the patient and said, what kind of things do you say to your patients? Five. Nurse <laughs> said to her patient, are you going to carry me to bed? <laughs> it's, it's right. Yeah, no. I'm going to come to your hospital, that's for certain. Yes. Yeah. Mick, making a martini, the cocktail barmaid said to James Bond. Number eight. You say number eight, Madeline. I suppose you want me to shake it. Of course, shaken but not stern. A James Bond cocktail, 10-10. We stay with your side. Stephanie, on stage, Paul McCartney turned to Ringo Starr and said... Toffee this, you don't have to do a little bit about number the Beatles' two. music. You say number two, Paul McCartney to Ringo Starr. Patty. Um, I'd like you to give me a specimen. I'd like you to give me a specimen. <laughs> Sorry, close, but quite good. Uh, we've been through all the questions you may now confer, remembering one of them is a red herring. We're back to Sol Zola Bud and Sebastian Coe. What does she say, Fred? Number one. You say number one, and that's Gary Wilmot. I can't leave my buttons like this. I can't leave my buttons like this. Afraid not. Uh, Mick, Cinderella to Prince Charming. Cinderella one, to yeah, Prince one, Charming? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, well, let's see, Gary. I can't leave my buttons like I this. I can't leave my buttons like this. <laughs> Nearly missed it. Steph, wedding night. Newly wed to her husband. What do you say, romantic evening? It's your wedding night. And on your wedding night, the newly wed turned Tink. to her husband lovingly and said, Patty Gold. I'd like you to give me a specimen. <laughs> You see, there's no romance left in the world. Uh, I can hear what it was, but I can't remember where it came okay, from. Okay, nurse to the patient. Again for you, Helen. Number two. You say number two this time? I'd like you to give me uh, a specimen. Of course, specimen. that's the way it came out. Freddie, you're on a roll. Uh, Paul McCartney again. Paul McCartney's a Ringo star. Number four. You think number four, and that is my little one. What, what did Paul McCartney say to Ringo star? I'm very fast for an 18-year-old. No, but a good try. Mick. <laughs> Mick, Zola Bud to Sebastian Coe. Number four. That's the way they come out. Say it. I'm very fast for an 18-year-old. Of course. There you go, you see. 30 points to 20. Steph, we're back to the newlywed on her wedding night again. What does she say to her husband? You can, you can have help off Mick if you like. Can you? Mick thinks that the newlywed said... He says number six, but I think Number it's six? Five. Well, let's find out. Linda Belligan? I think it's five. Why well, don't we do it in the road? <laughs> Oh, you did. <laughs> well, they're a bit funny up there, aren't they? Well, it's, not, it's, not, it's not that, but it frightens the horses. Right, uh, <laughs> Helen, Paul McCartney to Ringo Starr. Number seven. <laughs> Paul McCartney said to Ringo Starr, Roger Kitter. We've ripped the pile off the carpet. <laughs> We've ripped the pile off the carpet. Uh, wedding night, the newlyweds said to her husband, Mick, and you know that it isn't number seven. <laughs> <laughs> five. You think five? What is it, Jeff? Steve? Are you going to carry me to bed? Are you going to carry me to bed? Is correct. Forty points to twenty. Uh, 
We have this remaining question. It really is a tough one. You have to know something about Beatles music. Paul McCartney to Ringo Starr. Go on, Stephanie. Number three. Number three. No. Say it, Bobby. Do you think I might need false ones? You think? <laughs> no, it was out earlier, Freddie. How about you? Paul McCartney to Ringo? Six. Calculated guess from Freddie? Say it. Uh, why don't we do it in the road? Why don't we do it in the road? Remember, <laughs> the, uh, the title of a Beatles LP track was Why Don't We Do It In The Road. Ah, how clever. Right, uh, scores, 40 points to 30, quite close. And now the toughest round of all, the one I enjoy. But before that, who had the red herring? Yes, I had it. What was it? We rubbed the pile off the carpet. Yes, oh, no wonder it was a red herring. Right, uh, <laughs> second round is the toughie, the where we give the punchlines, but we all change places. Punchline remains in the same box. Let's do it. Punchlines, please. Cyril Smith. Rudolf Nureyev. <laughs> Cliff Richard. <laughs> Edward Heath. Danny LaRue. Ah, ah. <laughs> Martina Navratilova. Russell Grant. Cosimodo. There we are. <laughs> All famous astrologers, apart from Russell Grant. Right, um... <laughs> uh, change places. <laughs> behind let's see how we go you tell me Helen who's tall Irish and where's the padded bra <laughs> six. you say number six Roger well done Edward Heath <laughs> <laughs> no points my girl Mick uh, who's often seen hanging around with sailors <laughs> number seven Number seven? Cyril Smith. Cyril Smith, right on. But a good try. Fred, who is famous for saying, why am I so ugly? Two. You say the person who said, why am I so ugly, I was Bobby Dabra. I had a say that. Quasimodo. Quasimodo is correct. Well done, Freddie. <laughs> Helen, who represented Britain in the Eurovision Song Contest? Sang in the Song Contest for Eurovision. And it was? Three. It was three, and that's Madeline Smith. Danny LaRue. Danny LaRue, no. No, no, I'm afraid not. No, no, it, it was only Sopranos that year. Um, <laughs> Stephanie, who danced with the Sugar Plum Fairy? Number eight. You think the person who danced with the Sugar Plum Fairy was? Rudolf Nureyev. Rudolf Nureyev is correct. Well done, Stephanie. <laughs> Stay with your side. Who won the women's singles at Wimbledon, Mick? Can't confer yet. Oh, sorry, I was thinking aloud. It's all right, my darling. <laughs> no problem. Women's singles at Wimbledon was won this year by... Number two. Number two, Bobby? Quaffy Bogo. <laughs> new ball, please, new ball. <laughs> you can imagine it going at Quasimodo at Wimbledon. Quasimodo and McEnroe at one end and him at the other. Yes! <laughs> well, do it, Bobby. Yes. It's for you! <laughs> oh. Who's Liberal MP for Rochdale? Eight. Eight? <laughs> Gary! <laughs> Rudolf Nureyev. Rudolf Nureyev. <laughs> yes, you'd be surprised to learn that is not the correct answer. Right, <laughs> over to your side. You may now confer, been through all the questions, and this chap is tall, Irish, and where's... Oh, we've done it wrong here. Who is tall, Irish, and wears padded bras? Stephanie? Number three. You said very confidently three. Go Danny ahead, Danny. Danny LaRue, that's right. <laughs> Little trick question. 60 points to 40. Uh, Mick, who was often seen hanging round with sailors? And you know what sailors are? Six. You think the person was, Roger? Edward Heath. Edward Heath. <laughs> and that's right. Of course, you well see, that was Edward Heath's hobby. Sailed. And Steph, who represented Britain in the Eurovision Song Contest? One. You say one, and that is... Cliff Richard. Cliff Richard is correct. Well done, Linda. Next. Uh, we, who won the women's singles at Wimbledon? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's there somewhere. You know the name. Can you remember the box? <laughs> Women's five. singles at Wimbledon, number five, Patty Gold. Russell Grant. No. Russell Grant. <laughs> He beat Quasimodo in the final. Okay, yes. so. <laughs> <laughs> We're still, I've mixed the cards up. Right, Helen. Liberal MP for Rochdale. Seven. Fun? Seven. You say seven? Go ahead. Sarah Smith. Sarah Smith is correct. <laughs> and finally, moving on to the longest women's singles match in history. Who won it, Fred? At Number Wimbledon. four! Number four! Yeah. Go on, Shep Stevenson! Martina Navratilova! Martina won it. Of course she did. <laughs> there we go. Who had the red herring? I did. What was it, darling? Russell Grant. Russell Grant was a red herring. Dear old Russell. <laughs> and the first half of the show, 80 points to 60. Back soon. More punchlines. Don't go away. <laughs> Grace of Harrison Drape. The strength of Harrison Drape. And the beauty of Harrison Drape. Harrison Drape curtain tracks and poles. The beautiful way to hang curtains. I'm going to miss you, Henri. I will miss you, too. You were right. But of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My postcode. Ma chérie. Pass on your postcode. Exciting game this week, 80-60, uh, only 20 points in it, and we can take care of that straight away, because here's where we double the points up. 20 points available for the correct answer, Helen. But we don't read them out. You've got to guess. Find me one. When he resigned from the House of Commons, Willie Whitelaw said to his wife... Number five. Willie Whitelaw said to his wife, Patty Gold... They've promised to make me an ink monitor. <laughs> Well, I suppose it's better than going to the House of Lords. Uh, <laughs> Steph, Noddy, shook his, Noddy, yes, shook his head at big ears and said... Number seven. You say number seven? Go ahead, Debbie Arnold. I don't know how Noddy spoke. If you pin me to the floor, I'll submit. Yes. <laughs> how did Noddy speak? Well, nothing like that. <laughs> Not even remotely like that. <laughs> Fred, Big Daddy turned to Giant Haystacks and said... Six. Did he? <laughs> uh, well, what did he say, Roger? Mine's got a bell on the end! <laughs> <laughs> a bell on the end? No, no. Right, uh, over to Mick. Mick, when he returned from France, Julius Caesar said to his wife... Number two. You say number two, and that's Bobby Davro. I've got a three foot... Oh, <laughs> Is that a B or a W? It's a B. Oh, I've got a three foot Billy. <laughs> The three-foot Billy is not the correct answer. Neither was your alternative. Right. <laughs> Helen. On the beach, the man turned to his wife and said... On the beach. <laughs> he wasn't digging sandcastles. Just behave yourself. Right. Uh, on the beach, the man turned to his wife and said... Ford. You say Ford. I, nearly got, I nearly got caught by the ghouls with a G. Nearly got caught by the Gauls. <laughs> it's a historical question. Ne nearly got caught by the Gauls. Uh, window cleaner. <laughs> they do this on purpose, you know. They try and embarrass me. The, the window cleaner, the window cleaner, Stephanie, looked in his diary and said to the housewife... Window cleaner said to the housewife... Number what does your one. window cleaner say? Number one. Your window cleaner says to you, Linda Bellingham. My seat is up for grabs. My seat is up for grabs. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, Fred, getting out his truncheon, the American policeman said to the criminal. Eight. Do you think eight, Gary Wilmot? I can only do it once a fortnight. <laughs> I can only do it once a fortnight. American policeman, you see, not quite as punctual as ours. Uh, <laughs> Nick. 
The child came running home from school and said to his mother, run home from school. What do you say to his mum? Seven. You say seven? If you pin me to the floor, I'll submit. No, no! No, no, sorry. <laughs> That's it, Noddy. That was it. Yeah! Excellent. <laughs> right, you may now confer, because we've been through all the questions and we haven't got one. Right, uh, <laughs> He resigned from the House of Commons, Willie Whitelaw, and said to his wife... Number one. You think one? My seat is up for grabs. My seat is up for grabs. There you go, there's 20 points. Makes the score level. Freddie. We're back to Noddy again, still shaking his head at Big Ears. What does Noddy say to Big Ears? Nodding to big ears. Five. You say five, Patty Gold. They've promised to make me an ink monitor. Promised to make me an ink monitor. Hard luck, Fred. Oh, Stephanie, big daddy to giant haystacks. Couple of wrestlers. What do they say? Seven. Sounded confident <laughs> there, Debbie Arnold. If you pin me to the floor, I'll submit. Correct. <laughs> well done. 180. Stay with it, Mick. He returned from France, Julius Caesar, and said to his wife, Anything about history, Nick? No. No. <laughs> well, you haven't got a prayer with this. <laughs> Number eight. <laughs> number eight. Julius Caesar, back from France. What did he say to his missus? Number eight. You think number eight, Gary Wilmot? I can only do it once a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> no. Must have been a rough tripper. Huh? <laughs> Helen, on the beach, the man turned to his wife and said, on the beach. Nice beach in the summer. Man turned to his wife. What did he say? Thing about the dingling number six. Pardon? Number six. You think so, do you? Uh, what, what was it, Roger? Mine's got a bell on the end. Mine's got a bell on the end. <laughs> what are you looking like that for, Helen? No, no. Of course not. Stephanie, window cleaner, looked in his diary and said to the housewife. Number eight. Number eight, Gary? Oh, can I only do it once a fortnight? Can only do the windows once a fortnight. <laughs> 20 points. 120. American policeman Mick pulled out his truncheon and said to the criminal. Number two. Very confident. Bobby Davro. I've got a three-foot billy. A three-foot billy. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. That's right. American policemen call their trunches their billy, their billy club. Uh, another one correct. Number 20. You need one more correct answer to win, Stephanie. Can you do it? Child came running home from school. Said to his mum. Number ah, five. Sounds confident, Patty. They've promised to make me an ink monitor. An ink monitor indeed. Well done. Well done. There we are. Well, I'm happily... It has to be a loser, Helen, but you've enjoyed the show? Oh, very much. You did very well, and it's been a good operation, really, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good. You get a nice present from me. You get a nice food process to take home for hubby and the kids. <laughs> and, of course, what else do you get? And will be... Look at that. <laughs> Keith Harris and Orville. <laughs> so, there we are. That's for you, my plum. That's for Helen. And a kiss for you. There we are. And for this week's winner, my friend, the ex-paratrooper, Mitch, come and play the champion game. I'll give it you, try to sneak a look. Your dancers aren't on here anyway. Right. Okay? Okay. Nice and relaxed? Yeah. Do it. You said no problem when you came on. Let's <laughs> see how good you are then. Uh, eight punchlines, many right as you can. Seven out of eight for champion price. Okay? Let's do it. Punchlines, please. Toothpaste. Razor blades. Hand cream. Shampoo. Foot powder. Cough mixture. Aspirin. Deodorant. There we are. Right, you hit them again, Mick? Yeah. OK, <laughs> let's do it again. Punch lines, please. Toothpaste. Razor blades. Hand cream. Shampoo. Foot powder. Cough mixture. Deodorant. There we are. All things you find in a chemist shop. Okay? Okay. Firmly in your mind. Good luck. Let's go. Okay? Let's go. <laughs> uh, you wash your hair with? Number seven. You wash your hair with? Aspirins. Aspirins, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, this is the order they come out. Uh, you get rid of a headache with? Number seven. Oh, that's the way they come. Go ahead. Aspirins. Aspirins, that's right, Debbie. One out of two. You need to get all the rest right, okay? You'd shave your face, Mick, with what? Shave your face with? Number six. With number six, Roger? Razor blades. Razor blades is correct. Well done. Itchy feet can be relieved with? 
Itchy feet. Up there somewhere. Number five. Itchy feet with Patty. Foot powder. Foot powder. Yes, well done. You clean your little toothy pegs, Mick, with what? Number three. Number three, Maddie? Toothpaste. Toothpaste, right. Well done. Number five. <laughs> <laughs> he says, how many is that? <laughs> That's four out of five, OK? You might put this under your arms. You're wicked. <laughs> under your arms, you'd put... Number two. No. <laughs> Number two, Bobby. Cough mixture. Cough mixture. <laughs> uh, it helps keep your hands soft, Mick. Number one. Number one. Hand cream. Linda Belligan says hand cream, and that's right. Uh, final question. You get rid of a nasty cough with what? <laughs> number two. Of course, number cough two. Mixture. Cough mixture. Cough right. Very close, Nick. Uh, not quite the champion prize, but a nice one. We give you, as our present to you, a dishwasher for the wife. OK? Thanks very much. She's Good. got one with me. <laughs> She's got one with him, he says. <laughs> well done, Mick. Lovely contest, as yeah, usual. Thanks. Had a good laugh and enjoyed himself. Hard luck to Helen, who plays so well. Round of applause for Helen. Well done. Uh, a special thank you, of course, to Stephanie Lawrence and to Freddie Davis. And, of course, as usual, all my fabulous Punchline pals. Come along next week, Saturday. Have a laugh on Punchline. Good night. <laughs>